Hello everybody and welcome back to the next Unity tutorial video. Today we're going to go ahead and work on our card flipping logic. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to import a asset. It is a animation. You can get this on our website. So after you import that, let's go ahead and drag our card back into the scene. And we're going to remove our animator since we don't want to use that. We want to use an animation. And let's go ahead and take our card flip animation and attach it. Okay, um, so if you see this warning, the animation clip card flip used by the animation component card must be marked as legacy. So some animations have to be uh, changed. I have to change your animation type to legacy. Um, depends, on, depends on how they are made. Um, so just go to card flip and then right click on the uh, inspector, change it to debug, and then change the animation type to 1. And then let's go back to normal. Okay, so if we click play we can see this animation in effect. So that's a little hard to see. Okay. So it doesn't flip properly. So the best way to fix this is to create an empty game object. We'll call this card. And we will drag our card underneath it. Set this guy to 0, 0, 0. And this guy will be negative 90, negative 90. And now we will click play. And now it flips properly because it's now using the local position off the parent. Um, so because we have to do this, we're going to change how we structure our card prefab. So we're going to call this a card view. And we're going to take some components from the other one and put it onto this one. So we're going to add our box collider here. 0 0.2, 3.5, 2.5. And we're also going to add a card a card script. And then we're going to remove those from this. So in the card script, we now want to have a uh, reference to our card view. OK. And so we, let's assign our card view. And then where this renderer.material is, we want to say card view dot renderer dot material. And then the only other thing we want to do here is check off this play automatically. And then let's we prefab this guy. Okay. So now if we click play, the game should start normally. Oh, we have to turn back on our play mat. And all our cards are there, but they are now structured properly. So the next thing we want to do is fix a small bug I made uh, in the create card types function. So this, the point of this function is to loop uh, half between half of the cards from both ends of the array. And I accidentally added this here, divided by 2. should not be that. And this should go all the way up to the halfway mark, not one less than. So save that. OK. So I wanted to bring up the concept of uh, versioning in programming. So to do this, we're going to go ahead and create an interface called an I version, and then another script called a version view. Uh, 
Okay. So the concept of versioning is to only update when something has changed. And to do that, you use a version number. So in our RVI, in our I versioned interface, we're going to go ahead and create a uh, contract for other classes to inherit that will enforce this kind of structure. Uh, they will use a um, a dirty function to in increment their version number and they will also have a dirty update when something has changed and they will have a ulong uh, version with a getter and a setter so the reason why we're using a ulong is that in some in some games this number may get really really big and ulong is a very large number so you won't actually like max out the end cap um, so our version view is going to implement this function or this interface so you can go to refactor and then say impl implement explicit or implement interface and it will create these uh, skeleton functions for you So we're going to go ahead and implement these. Um, the other thing we're going to add to this is ulong or cached version, which is how we're going to determine if anything has changed, and another version so that we can keep track of our current version. In our getter, we're just going to return version, and in our setter, we're just going to set our version equal to the value that we're passing in. In our mark dirty, all we're going to do is increment increment the um, version, and we're going to change our void function to a virtual void that's also protected for things that inherit this class and the only thing this is going to do is if our cached version does not equal our version then we're going to call dirty update and we're going to set our cached version equal to our version This is going to be a public virtual void function so that we can override it in base classes. And that should do it. We are not going to be using start. Okay, so we can go to our card now. And we can implement our version view. And we're not going to be using an update we're going to be using a dirty update and now we're also going to include an enumeration for the different card states we're going to have and they will be flipped and hidden and we're going to make an uh, a variable for this state and it's going to be by default it's going to be hidden so on mouse down instead of printing out unclicked we're going to go ahead and check to see what our state is and if our state is equal to hidden then we want to flip it and flipping it is just going to be calling mark dirty, which will then trigger this dirty update to run. And we want to do one more thing actually. We want to set our state equal to 
flipped. In our dirty update, we're going to go ahead and call a coroutine to handle our uh, animations. Uh, so right now, all we're going to do is call our card view dot animation play, and then in here we're going to call start coroutine and pass in start card flip. And save all. And we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and create a public float. Call this delay, set this to 0.5. And then we're going to re return or yield return new wait for seconds delay. Okay. So if you click play, click on a card, card will flip. So now we can flip over all of our cards. So there's still no matching logic, but It is getting closer, and that's going to be it today. Thank you guys for watching.